the recording now. All right, um, this is our weekly sync, and apparently this is partly the Open Broadcaster weekly sync today, because uh, we're figuring that out. So let's. Here's the terminal, um, and here is the. Oh, how am I going to do this? Okay, I just realized all my window with all my with my stuff is attached to the one that's recording our faces. Okay. Um, there we go. So leave the meat window over here. Move everything else. There's section. And there's the chat. Okay. So this is the one that has no audio, right? I think this is section. And I tried to do this and I think we struck out. Yeah, we struck out. No audio there. All right. So I'm just going to put, you know, that there's no audio. Um, just, just in case, I don't think there was anything really relevant there, but you know, maybe we can voice over part of it later. I, I can yeah, so I kind of read the meeting minutes. It, it was all there. So yeah, I uh, know. All right, that way, the other people won't reboot their computer. Okay, and we'll have to find the other one. Okay, so, great. Come on. Okay. All right, so we did a few introductions last week. Um, come on. So I know you, you. I know that's a tough time slot for you. So I'm glad this time slot works. Um, this is. Mm, I yeah, usually, this one is pretty pretty good. Like great. Pretty, this is when yeah. I start my day. So uh, well, I start a little bit earlier than this, but um, this is perfect. So um, okay. Uh, I don't know if I have anything to say, but here we go. So um, I know yes. that we have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Go for it. So I was uh, looking into uh, the CI still, CI, mm -hmm. looking into CI stuff. And, uh, and so you fixed CI the Scikit stuff, right? So Scikit stuff is fixed. Great. But uh, one of the Scikit tests fails randomly. So I have written about it in the uh -oh. relevant test show, like why it is failing. So it is probably we are not using the right metric, and it sometimes gives us a negative accuracy. So Ah. Uh. That is an issue, uh, but you know that is completely random, so it happens yeah. some of the time. It doesn't happen so much. So and what 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 subtest is this on? Uh, this is on uh, accuracy scorer test for or for a very specific model. It happens only for one model. Mm, okay. So uh, uh, you can see it. The current CI is failing on psychic test three point seven. Okay. And it is probably that only. And other than that, the Sphinx guys have made some changes, and now we oh, have yeah. uh, some something colliding issue. I have mentioned that as well in that issue, in that PR. I have linked it in the PR. Um, I'm just trying to fetch the numbers here, uh, the number of PR, which it is. It actually got merged, so it just you know it did disappears from everywhere. Not closed. Yes, the PR number is 1292. Sphinx people have uh, some issue there uh, about, you know, we have uh, duplicate names in accuracy scorer is accuracy and uh, in CLI and the accuracy that we use as an object for printing flow type. Ah, yeah, goddamn. So yeah, those we need two to are having out. colliding names and, uh, you know, it was not. Uh, blowing up earlier but it just started blowing up recently yeah and that... many people have written that it, it has started affecting them yeah i was kind of we need to probably just get rid of that um i'm not i'm not sure that we need our we need a separate type for accuracy i think that that's that's like really really old holdover i mean i think that's from like the initial version um so is there is there an issue for it uh is there an issue for it i think there might be um okay issues so so while we are at the while we're you know enumerating my stuff i just wanted to add yes 
Yes. So uh, that is, uh, I want to uh, make some videos and yes, uh, good. Uh, around how to set up uh, the development environment for DFFML and get started with the developing something. That would be so, awesome. So I can do it for Linux. I can do it for Windows, but uh, getting a VM for Mac is just very difficult. My so my wife has a Mac. Someone, I can, someone I can, can get a Mac one. So because we have uh, mostly Windows people, so I will yeah. first make a Windows video. I have a Windows VM set up in my machine right now. I, so I'll do videos for that. That will help new contributors coming in uh, and also save us much more time than we would uh, give people setting up their stuff. And all. all right. So I'll make I the could, video. Yeah, you want or do you have I a could, Mac? Yeah, I could do one for Mac, uh, but I'll wait for uh, Sahil's videos for us to get an idea. Yeah, that's what I was going to do too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, well, well you, I think you, you did a great format on uh, your video um, last time. Uh, where well, you guys both did a great format. Um, so it's, it's Yeah, nice so I was just, you know, talk. waiting for the logo poll to close so that I can use yes, the logo in the that. video. That would also look pretty nice. That is that is great. So um, so let's see. Um, uh, okay, so I can close this. So logo legal approved. Um and so set up videos. Um, we'll do on Mac. OS. Hashim has, I guess he has the latest Mac M1 Mac, right? Yeah, uh, it's actually the older one now because they released another M1. <laughs> there, <laughs> yeah, there. That, that is some Apple stuff, but it is still. Pretty yeah, cool. <laughs> right. God forbid you don't yeah. have to pay for something every year. Yeah. Um. Okay. Great. Hey, great, great idea. So. Um, so and then on the, you, do you have anything else so yes yeah, so one more thing i wanted to ask was about the should i test well, mm. you know i don't really understand what is happening around there and some yeah. tests are failing so if you can give me some clue me in about it so that would just help me yeah to, i think know, we can go over some of that stuff um so the scikit test fix is here um so because should I test have been failing from a very long time before before they we have. start of Oh yeah, there has been a they, bunch of stuff. They always have some of the other some of the other issue with uh, some yeah. Numbers, some they have a lot numbers, of they have a lot of intermittent CV number detection failures. I tr I've try every time it fails, I try to go through and update it so that um it's like a greater than range rather than a direct comparison because there's a bunch of them in there but that's you know uh yeah that 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 um that we'll figure it out so should i test so um all right and then so hashem how how's it going with you and and what are you what are you looking at yeah so uh, i have a pending uh, pr for review Yes, and I have been looking it's, at that. Um, yeah, twelve twenty-two. Twelve twenty-two or twelve sixty-three. Twenty-two. Twelve twenty-two. All right. Yeah, that's the one I made changes to recently. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I must have been uh, since I'd seen. Let's see. Train. Oh, this is the issue that it's corresponding to. Okay, so, oh. and, and the PR is, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, so that yeah. was the one I was looking at. I was like, man, I must have been really turned around there. Okay. Um, yeah, this is great. This looks great. I was about to merge it. Um, the, the, the one thing is we should probably, uh, we should probably, okay, now I just have two tabs. All right, so the one thing is I noticed that this repeats in each, um, in each, uh, like this, this section repeats in all three, you know, um, all yeah. three times that you do this. And I'm wondering, should this be something that's like a method on a model? I think it might, it might be better suited as a method on a model. So I think we could open another issue and do that later. Just say, hey, refactor this, uh, because then the model could programmatically declare, you know, if it has a different predict feature. You know, if it's called something else in the config, it could return the right thing. Um, the other thing was, what was it? Okay, I think you got it. Yeah, you got it. Uh, da, 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 you had the test. 
yeah, I think that was it. I think that was the only thing. So we'll just file an issue on this. Um, so, and then we'll merge this. Does that sound good? Is there anything open? Did I miss anything? It looks good to me as far as I can yeah, tell. Yeah, that sounds about yeah. right. Okay, um, feature request. So while Ashim is here, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, that uh, test, the basic test which we run, like the base test we have in uh, Python 1 that is in 3.8, it is failing due to some IPython error. And that is from yeah. some of the notebooks. I, I am not sure what it is, why it is, but you know, if you know someone who has taken a look at Oh, it, that was me. I mean, I, I think I, I believe I was the one who introduced that bug. Um, so guilt, guilty as charged So, here. so, so it, it is some, something related to IPython actually, and it is not happening yes. in three point seven. Yes. So, so um, get log. Okay. What? What? Uh, this is the test for the notebook, right? Test. Test. Notebook. Oh my God! I'm on WSL right now. Uh, so it is like attribute error, IPython core cannot, has not attribute find source, but it is working in 3.7. So yep. maybe it has some kind of API incompatibility. Okay, so let me just log this bug first. So high level um, refactor, um, refactor, what would we call this, you know, um, prediction, uh, feature prediction or feature list. Yeah, prediction feature list. All right, so and then we're gonna also we also grab features. Okay, features needs to stay consistent. Predict really needs to stay consistent, like generally. But there are reasons why you might not do a predict. Um, so does this really need to be refactored? We'll just let's see. I'm wondering. Yeah, it needs to be able to be overridable by the model, I think. So we need something that says, like, that will be, let us say, um, let me merge this and then we can reference the link directly in the code. So, uh, come on, wow, this thing is really killing me today. All right, um, what do we have here? So, right, okay, so I'm gonna have to squash this. Oh no, okay, one commit. Okay, great, you already rebased. Yeah. Great, thank you. Beautiful. All right, so wrong button, don't click that. All right, let's go into it and look. So... Okay, let's grab these lines. Now we can do this. What are you doing? Okay. Uh, I'm really confused at what just happened here. I think I tried to... I think... There we go. Okay. Uh, so what do we want? So we basically want to move this logic into, so this needs to go to utils. So, um, needs to go to utils.internal. Uh, uh, it's already in it's there. It's already right? in there. Okay. Great. I think I when I looked at the diff, I wasn't sure if it was in there or not. I must have missed that. Okay, so um, this should be an overridable method in model base class. Model context. Or no, model. Yeah, this is a model. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and then we, we should call it from the locations. It appears in high level. There's three of them, right? Three yeah. locations. Yeah. Okay. Refactor out. Uh, call 
to list records to dict. Uh, list records to dict. Um, okay, yeah. It's into model this class. This is not a P4, this is a P3. All right, there we go. So that was this. Great, nice work, merged. Follow, oops. Great. Okay, so anything else on your side, Hashem? Um, I'll start working on the confidences uh, and prediction. Ah, PR. yeah. So let's take a look I'm at that real that. quick, because yeah, there was there was a bunch of stuff with the accuracy scores and that. Finally, I think I tried to rebase this at one point, and it's relatively smooth. Shockingly, shockingly. Um, okay. Oh, back when the CI runs past. Um, okay, never mind. I take all that back. All right, look at that. Not smooth. Um, so that, be... yeah. that was, yeah. Okay, I want to think about this together for a little bit and make sure that this is the right direction here. So let's look at our general flow. Right, so, and and maybe we should look at the notebooks that you were doing just to just to get you know a good idea. I think we, you know we really need to focus. We really need to make sure that everything that we do matches the the flow. Like the goddamn no, there we go. Uh, okay, so let's make sure that all this stuff looks concise. You know, um, so. I wish they had just top level of weight in the. Don't they have? No, maybe they added that. I'm not sure. Um, okay, we need to do This is another thing. I, I realized this recently while we're at it. Um, we need to make sure that um, the sources arguments gets into the beta release because we can't. We, we cannot do a beta release if we can't do test train split on a source. That's not okay. <laughs> um, we can't, that has to be in the, the top level API. Um, so let's see. I realize that's probably not tagged in the milestone because I think I removed everything from the milestone recently. Um, and I think this requires the config refactor, which is why it hasn't happened. Um, it may not require the config refactor. We may just have to change the way that we do the um, way that we do the source, so it's not configuration parameter source talk combination started or begin dot index. Okay, I think it's this one. So this this has to happen. There's no at one point on my ass. No way um, that needs to happen for beta. Uh, yeah, I think I moved everything to 1.0 when I was trying to declutter at one point. Okay, so this needs to also happen. Okay, so and I think we can maybe just split it out. I don't know how we're going to do this. I think that it needs some changes to. Um, I think it needs some changes to the, the to the config um, infrastructure that we have. So let me just say um, tagged uh, source. Um, source uh, start uh, index and index for beta. Uh, okay. All right. So separate confidence from prediction. Okay. So how I'm just, where's our, now this isn't a good one for this, which where's the other? So maybe 
ensemble by stacking. Okay. Mm, one one question I have yeah. about docs uh, that is uh, the the documentation which is kind of not written like notebooks how, how it is executed like is it executed per RST basis or like we have a global execution? Yeah. What so there's happen? there's it's because, per RST. Uh, per RST. So so can I can I run it? Uh, I and. Uh, an isolated test, like if I want to just run for CLI or something. Like just run one so, page? Or just, just run one page just to see, yes. you know, there are there are many docs failing, like CLI yeah. RST is failing, and uh, uh, the there are some other ones too uh, in docs, which a, are, you know, which are doc tests. So, so to debug them, to see the changes, I need to need a way to run yeah. them. Right, yeah, so I've, you know, I'm debating the thing, okay, I saw this recently, which is, I'll throw this out here, so, while we're on the topic. This is cool. This is a, kind of interesting, where is it? This. Um... This looks interesting. Yes, yes, I saw, saw it on LinkedIn as well. Yes. Yeah, LinkedIn yeah. Is. So this looks interesting. Um, sort of like little web UIs directly for your notebook. I think that you know there's something there's something to be done here, right? I don't know what it is, but um, because thinking about you know, so here's here's my here's what I'm thinking, right? Is that there's something to be done with okay so so number one the notebooks have a bit of a uh, it's difficult to review them right and it's difficult to manage diffs to them because of their json nature right um the restructured texts are easier for that but they're not you know you can't you can't it's not a notebook so that's not ideal um so there's some happy medium there or maybe some translation that needs to happen i think um so because I know that there's the review NB and other tools, but it doesn't help us when it's in the Git repo, right? Um, so it would be nice if we could figure something out there. Just this is like you know long long term, you know maybe short term. Ideally, this this is stuff that I think working on documentation and making documentation easier to write and test helps us go faster in every area, right? Because then our tests become our docs. Um, so how are docs? Okay, so let me just make some notes down here. So docs. Uh, so let me reference this. So uh, notebooks have um, diff issues with Git. And with reviewing, uh, maybe make a RST to notebook and back converter. Um, so then there's this thing. So Mercury. So basically, you know, this is this seems like a nice way. Seems like a nice way to you know give people notebooks that they can you know seems like a nice way to execute single notebooks for demos uh you know hosted uh so then i i also see a future where you know this this mercury kind of ties into something that really been wanting to do where you could take a uh, like a restructured text file or a notebook and use it as an operation, right? Um, because then you could write, or like, you know, yeah, if you can use it as an operation, right? Or a whole data flow or whatever, you know, like it doesn't matter what the unit is. The unit, I guess, at the end of the day is sort of an operation, right? So um, if, you, if we could define the notebooks, like if we could use this Mercury thing in conjunction with notebooks written as RST, then we could do we, we could essentially have documentation that can be executed within data flows. Uh, so you can chain documentation pages together, right? So if you do this demo, right, 
and then you do another demo, then you can chain them together. So if you do a demo of like some uh, object detection, remember we were going through like that one uh, video recognition thing. I can't remember what it was, but it required that you run it through several models beforehand, right? So if we were to write a note, like a, a, a tutorial for each model, like in how you pre-process that data set, then you could very easily end up with a very complex, you know, model chain um, by just chaining the tutorials that already exist or writing a new tutorial. So, and in, in this way, you know, everything stays docs and is executable and is like. So, you know, so we need some way to convert our docs into notebooks. That's it. Yeah, and I think that's pretty trivial. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah there, there are libraries to do that. I guess uh, mm -hmm. there is this RST to IPYNB. Okay, great. That directly converts it. I'm just going to ping it in. Great. So let's check this out. But it's not very much maintained. Yeah, it's not maintained. That's okay. We can just fork it. Um, what do we got? License but PSD I guess there's right. not much uh, to it, you know, like they cannot really do much. About yeah, exactly. There's not much to it. Maybe this. we can just fork it and run a test that if it is working. Yeah. The main thing is, you know, um, the main thing is... It's just is, a script. It's, a it's script. just, yeah. Yeah. So the main thing is, I believe converting does does the notebooks support they support rst blocks right natively or do they have to be marked down uh it, it is rst only i guess it is not marked down it's not marked down no i mean notebooks like when you write a notebook and you write a block oh. that's a comment block you know is it um is it yeah, that's down. marked down. Yeah, that, that yeah, was kind of what I was thinking down. the issue is. So it looks so like they're doing extensions to use RSP yeah. in that, I guess. It yeah. doesn't natively support it. Yeah, and so this is one of the things. This is one of the things, and I know when we did this, um, you know, now that we have the notebook builds as a part of this, it includes Pandoc, right, as a dependency. Now, now Pandoc is not my, you know, it's not my favorite thing for us to, um, it's, it's, you know, it's a stop, it's a stop gap. It's a good stop gap. Um, but it's not my favorite that we have to apt get install some compiled dependency, right? And that it's not something that you can just pip install, uh, just because it adds one more setup step for development. Right. Um, so ideally those, where are those people that were doing this? Um, um, uh, you, you guys know that Sphinx. So Sphinx uh, Markdown. Sphinx Markdown. This the one uh, the, remark is a, deprecated, the, uh, and now it's what is it called? My ST. Is that it? Yeah, my ST. Yeah, because they got rid. Of, basically, remark is deprecated now. So, and this guy, I think, also calls out to Pandoc, um, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yeah, Pandoc is kind of the standard, you know. So yeah, yeah, I understand, yeah. Standard. Maybe, let's see, is Pandoc Haskell? I think it's Haskell, right? I don't know. I think it is. I'm wondering if you can, okay. I'm wondering if you can compile it. This is going to sound ridiculous. I'm wondering if you can compile it to WebAssembly and then execute it from WebAssembly because then you could have it natively execute via the WASM interface. But anyways, this is problems for another time. We'll get it working first. It's just, it would be nice to be able to pip install everything. Obviously this is getting a little bit complicated. So I will just make note of this. Um, so uh, where and where was that link? Great. Also that IPI thing, uh, you know, I told you that it is still blocked on my side. Uh, I cannot really manage anything right now. Yes, the IPython. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. I think I have that on the list. Yeah. Um, no, PyPy thing. Oh, the PyPy? PyPy? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, crap. I meant to do that before this meeting. Um, so when I opened the mail, it was showing that the token is not valid or something. That's why probably it didn't give me the authorization to do anything. Token. Yeah. Okay. So um, let me... 
And so let me do, uh, I think I had to get out my authenticator app and all that stuff. And that's why I ended up not doing it when I saw your message. Okay, so John needs to modify PyPy. So do I need to have 2FA enabled on my account as that is? Oh, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, I wanted you to guy. I I knew there was something. I uh, but if you guys could turn on two factor auth, uh, because if I make you, uh, if I make you maintainers, then you know if somebody takes over your account, there's bad things. Bad things can happen, right? So or owners, whatever it was. But I noticed you guys didn't have two factor auth on, so I was going to tell you first, yeah. and then I forgot I, to tell you. I have to start two FA so, using two FA because yeah. I already use it for the crypto wallet, so I guess it is pretty easy to use. Maintainers need to turn on two FA. Texas. Okay. All right. Other than that, I also wanted to ask: Do we have the print bot enabled on our repo? We do not have Dependabot enabled. Um, because we it, could go it, enable it, it that would be great. It quickly goes and uh, you know uh, builds, uh, marks all the CVEs we have and makes a pull request, and that that is very easy to do. Yeah, yeah I think that would be great. Um, I thought that was only last time I looked at it. It was only for JavaScript, but you know I looked at it a long time ago. So. Yes, it works for PyPy now. Like it, it uh, scans for Python dependencies, which I wasn't put on. That's and great. The CV number. Oh look, they've uh, integrated I, it. Or no, wait. Yeah, they've integrated it into GitHub now. Yes. Was it always in? I thought it was like a third-party thing at one point. Okay. So. Yes, it was, but now it is in. You know, you can go into the repo and enable the import. Probably that is. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Simple. So, all right, so I'll go I don't enable know, I just get mails from this part uh, for my private yeah. old dusty repos, which are I'm never using, but anyways. So it just reminded me that I should. Okay. Um, how are the docs executed? So, so we have IPython, should I test, and how are the, oops, and how are the docs executed? Okay, so we did the spiel about um, still and doc uh, would be nice to have um, would be nice to have um, oh yeah um, all pip installable dependencies and I think I think Hashim you were around for the whole conda thing that we went through a while ago, but that is exactly why I'm so on about the pip installable dependencies. I mean, I can't tell you how many hours we spent fighting with Conda. Uh, anytime there's things in different dependency systems, it can get annoying to maintain in the CI runs. Okay, so let's go through. So anything else that uh, for the docket here? I know we're, we'll probably have to go a little over here because uh, we're buttoned up against time, but anything, anything else for the agenda? No, I, I'm all, all stuck again. Okay, so I wanted to talk, I want to make sure we talk about um, um, the confidence separation from. Okay, this is an important one to go right. Oh, shit. I'll be just back in a minute. Okay. All right, let's talk about the separating confidence from prediction then. Um, so <clears throat> I think that this is still the right direction to go, right, for API consistency with the feature stuff, right? So uh, I think that was the main reason we were doing this. So uh, feature yeah. name returns value dot confidence was it no it's dot prediction diction name should also okay um, OK 
Okay, so we have that down, and I think okay, so I think that's pretty much all the reasoning we need for this one. I just want to make sure since it's been so long, it's been almost a year. Um, yeah, I'm sorry this was uh, such a long running thing. It was it was that accuracy stuff just changed so many things uh, that yeah, it was uh, you know that would that would have been really hard to do both of these with. Um, okay, so. Okay, so the other thing off this, so I think we've decided, yes, okay, we, we've updated. I want to make sure we have reasoning for this. So um, this needs to be in beta. Great. Okay. Um, so the other thing on this is I've been trying to think about, you know, what makes a good issue, right? H how do you make sure that you have a complete description of the issue? Um, and I sort of, I, I'm, I'm playing around. This is a longer discussion, but I just want to throw this out there for you guys um i'm document i'm throwing random notes related to data flows and and just sort of general things into this issue here um you'll see i'm updating this frequently um and so because there's not a lot of docs on data flows um and it's not you know with that that needs to be documented right um and part of that is right we know that we don't have a uh, solid um, interface, right? No, it's not very ergonomic, right? Uh, not, not, not the most clear. So I've been working on. I know that you had Sahil. You were going to do like a PyTorch style thing um, uh, at some point. That would be really cool. You know, whenever, whenever I know you're, you're f fixing CI failures is definitely the first thing we need to do. But I uh, just wanted to say that for the recording. You know, we're going to look at that, and then uh, you are still planning on looking at that, right? Yes, and okay. other than that, uh, when are we planning to go with the second party transition stuff? Because that is also pending, kind of. Yes, yes. Um, so that. Because if we do it before GSOC or we do it after yeah. GSOC, so and that's, that it would be very problematic. For yeah, it. that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, that that'll be coming up here. Um, I didn't put it on the list, but let me put it on the list. So, um, so that kind of goes into. Uh, uh, governance and GSOC. Okay, so I'll put this in bold for, we need to talk about this. All right, so, okay, we called, this one's done. All right, so, uh, yeah, so basically this stuff is, you know, a bunch of ramblings and random notes that I'm gonna put together and some more stuff. And then there was also like, I'm playing around with something that's sort of like a, a, a uh, just a plain Python implementation that's like a very simple implementation of like what a data flow is. Um, sort of just, it's basically like a loop with some events and, and like a dictionary of, hey, this event maps to this thing, do this thing, right? Trying to make it like a little more uh, close to like peek under the hood, you know, um, so that people understand what, uh, what, what is actually happening, right? When they, when they, when they, you know, create this data flow description, right? Uh, they can they can sort of yeah, the peek into the hood, and hopefully that helps people understand what's going on better. Um, so kind of take this transition. Um, the the idea for these tutorials right now is sort of you know, you do your non data flow approach, and then you do your you know basic uh, this this sort of peek under the hood style data flow approach. Right, and then you do your, you know, flow definition in the, um, you know, the way that Sahil you're going to uh, propose ideally, and then maybe we have another one where it's like, okay, now here's the raw way of of writing a data flow that's, you know, not <laughs> not very nice and pretty, but if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, you know, here you go, here's the here's the data structure, right? Um, so kind of that that's kind of like the arc of the the story of data flow, um, and. Uh, and, and how we do that tutorial. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. So, okay, so we need to, did we get enable dependent pot? Um, I think I did. Enable dependent bot. No. OK, 
Africa. So enable dependent bot and where was that? And this is being slow today. I'll just put it here. Oh, here. Okay. All right. So now governance and GSOC, how docs executed. We covered the. Uh, okay. So let's do how our docs executed. So if you wanted to execute a single doc test, um, you could go to contributing and not notebooks documentation because uh, well if you wanted to execute a notebook then you'd go execute a notebook like that um, but this is test doc test so for example code man i could have sworn that we had what console test sphinx extension no i could have sworn that this oh maybe it's under testing no Ah, here. Yeah, okay, I see that's what it was. Okay, see this is not this should also be under the documentation stuff. Okay. Um this is the how to run a single RST test. Um and it doesn't run them unless you have this environment variable set because they uh that way if you run all of the unit tests, it you know that running all of the unit tests is a you know, it takes a long time. Um so if you if you want to run the the a unit test that is about the docs, then it's going to look for this test docs thing, and that's how it does this split out in the matrix on the <clears throat> on the um, CI. So, is that does that answer your question? Yes, pretty much. That, that's what I wanted. I, okay. I just didn't look at it. So let's look make. At it and test it. Yeah. So let's make sure that we uh, let me go. Um, Create let's see, uh, docs contributing uh, docs uh, reference testing docs uh, section under testing uh, from docs page. Oh. Documentation. Um, this needs to happen. And documentation. Great. Give me that little pop up now. Okay, need to reference uh, testing from docs, 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 docs. Okay. All right. Um, so should I test IPython governance and GSOC? Okay. So uh, let's talk about should. Uh, let's talk about the. We can talk about the. Governance and GSOC will probably be long. These are probably, or no, this is probably a short discussion. Okay, so I talked to Yash and Saksham recently, and they are trying to do this build tree org. Um, mm, yes, I also had a word with them. You guys that. talked to them? Great. Yes. Um, so yeah, you guys should talk, uh, and Hashim, you, you should talk to them too if you haven't talked to them already. Um, so we are looking at, I, so I talked to my legal department um, and, you know, we talked to Yash and, and Saksham and I think there's some other people involved. You know, I'm sure they want you guys to get involved there. Um, and, uh, you know, they're trying to build out this org and this set of projects under this org. Um, GitHub.com slash Billtree. And, you know, we had, we had talked about moving things to the DFFML org. Um, you know, we might, might, it's looking like, um, as far as, you know, transfer of ownership of the repo, legal is looking for an organization with a defined governance structure. So, uh, 
I met with legal and they told me, here's what a governance structure looks like. And then I met with Yash and Saksham and I said, you know, hey, if you guys make a governance structure, then we can transfer the repo to you, right? They could then transfer the repo to um, the DFML org itself, but it, you know, it would be like a build tree. All of this stuff would be, you know, you all would be, you know, the, the main maintainers on it, right? Um, you know, I would be involved, obviously, too. Um, extend call. Oh, you're going to make me pay for that, aren't you, Google? Okay, so I would be, you know, obviously involved, too. Still, I'm not just going to like, <laughs> you know, you're, not, you're still going to see me. So, um, so but is, is you it guys... build tree is going under DFML? Or DFML no, DFML will build go build under build tree. tree. So okay. that's, uh, yeah. So then, then, then all of the legal compliance and security processes go away. Um, and we could, we could release, you know, as fast as we wanted. Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's no gates on releasing anymore. <laughs> so, which is why we haven't released since last February. So because... uh, regarding this, I, I have some other project ideas, you know, if it is something that we have freedom with. Yes. We have other project ideas under it. I have talked to you about a couple of project ideas. Yes. Right? That would uh, be a great thing for here. The recording one, the simulation one. Yes, that would be and perfect. Maybe we can take those projects with, uh, because uh, I don't have all the expertise. I don't have the front end. And that's and the point of the, this. That's the point of this. These guys mm. have this. Uh, I had a word with Yash also. Mm. So I am working on a couple of talks. Uh, I just want a proper way to submit the idea so that like not only yes. we can see it, but anyone on the, uh, coming to the org can see it. Like so, submit an application, okay. like submit a proposal for a project, right? Yes. Uh, that, I think that that's perfect. We had talked about that um, because, you know, they said, you know, they want to be a space to create projects and then match people up with other people who have the rest of the skills needed. And then you can all go build the project, right? So it sounds like that's exactly what you're talking about. So we'll communicate to them, you know, looking for formal um, project proposal template um you know and we'll mention uh sahil's uh ideas are you know the um meeting recorder and all of their project they're they're you know so they're thinking about you know governance and then the projects themselves so they would you know anybody who's a, 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 a within you know the top level governors of that org would go and then you know help where needed in the different projects right and then people could obviously work across projects but you know their the goal would be to try to you know create an environment where uh you know everybody everybody you know can can help each other right so meeting recorder what was the other one? Oh, the other one was uh the simulator simulator for what was it for, for CPUs and chips and stuff. Ah, so yeah, that's right. Tool we talked yeah. About. The ah. QEMU backend and everything. So yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Oh, I saw something recently. Oh, I'll try to remember. Uh, ooh, oh, God, you know, this would be so sweet. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, some kind of Python interface to QEMU. I've talked about about that with people before that would be oh man you could really you could really emulate some cpus or simulate some cpus it would be great um so uh, uh setting up governance um so and then so i so we have logo approval um i think most people have voted on the poll will probably right now i don't know how many other people need to vote um, but you know, we'll I guess do the Jason Long one is winning right now. Jason right? Long is, is winning right now. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll see, you know, we'll see what, what ends up there, um, on the 30th and then, you know, we'll communicate to whoever the, uh, person was that, um, you know, designed the, the logo that, that, uh, got the most votes and, um, we'll ask for SVGs. Right. And then, uh, yeah, and then we'll you know we'll use that so logo. So if you want another to use question, for stuff. I wanted to ask you off the mm -hmm. record. Uh, off the record? Well, wait minute. here. Yes. We're we're on the record right now. So so wait a minute. Um, let's cover the uh, should I test an IPython and then it so I'll just remember ping that. you on Gitter about that. Yeah, it's ping, not very complicated. Ping on Gitter. Okay. Um, so should I test? So let's look at the should I test. 
yeah, so that's what's going on. So hopefully we can get the project transferred over, you know, and then, you know, it may, it may, it, it likely, you know, likely uh, moving it to build tree would end up polluting build tree with a million plugins. Um, there's also the thing that, uh, you know, you don't really need to st split it out into the poly repo, like splitting it out into the poly repo structure would be good. It's also how, um, build tree is organized, right? Oh, wow. They changed the setting page. Um, uh, why am I on the settings page? Oh, I don't need to be. Um, but, uh, yeah, but I think Especially we should still probably CI do it. CI would be very fast. CI would be much faster. Exactly. And we'll only test what you need to test. I mean, and plus not a lot of people do that poly repo validation like in open source projects and so it would be a good example like we would be a good example of an open source project doing poly like a poly repo ci setup right that's very unique and uh would be really cool if we could figure that out now and i think part of all this stuff with the man all, all this stuff with these docs and the manifest this is all from all that poly repo stuff um like uh, like much or i mean the manifest stuff is all related to all this poly repo stuff um because you know we need a way to declare our dependencies and, and which versions and then retest against those things in the spec in the manifest okay so let's dump okay let me just pull up those tests that are failing so what was the last run of master um, I'm missing a couple of blocks here about uh, governance and, uh, you know, shifting DFFML. Uh, it would be great if we can talk in more detail in the next meeting. About yes, that. that sounds good. Yeah, let's 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 talk in the next meeting. Um, so you said you have some thoughts on, on it? No, uh, I just don't really uh, get it. You don't understand. OK, yeah. Um, there's I mean, I don't I, I'll I mean, I don't understand either, right? Like, I just know that there's an opportunity to move it to a place, um, you know, that's owned by students have been who have been a part of this project and who would like, you know, other students who have been a part of this project and other projects to come govern a bunch of repos together. So we can talk about it more, but that sounds, you know, great to me. Um, so let's see i know you guys you know I, I i you guys have all built this project right and so the more agency you can have over it the better um so i and i see that as an avenue for that okay and this is the intermittent failure i'm assuming or no this is wait no i'm not on okay so uh, not greater than Oh, wow, the number of vulnerabilities went down. That's really, really, really surprising. I call bullshit. There's no way that that went down because these are pinned. So either the vulnerabilities magically disappeared, which is not true. Um, okay. What do we actually have in JavaScript that is... Uh, the, you know, we're not testing just... us. We're testing... Um, well, one of them tests us, but um, that's, these are not. This is not the one that's failing. So this is testing JavaScript. Um, so the part of should I think is kind of you know black box for me still. I haven't seen anything inside should I. So what is it? Like, so should I is a that? is a, a meta static analysis tool. So um, essentially, you know, a static analysis tool analyzes some you know some, some something right. Um, so and these are all most of these are about finding vulnerabilities. So basically, should I be in a meta static analysis tool, you point it at a code base and it figures out what static analysis tools it needs to run. And then, you know, reports an aggregate of the results, right? Um, so if I pointed it at a code base that had both, and there's one in there that has both JavaScript dependencies and Rust dependencies. So you point, if you point should I at the code base, it will know that it should run both Rust dependency analyzers and JavaScript dependency analyzers, and it will pull, report back both results. So how does that relate to DFFML as a project? So DFFML is originally built around this security, um, you know, this sort of security anal uh, analysis of open source dependencies as its main use case. Um, so this was a demo. Essentially, this is why this is why it's under the example. So it's a demo showing uh, it was a demo that was used to show, 
Let's see. We have Bye. less Love than you. a minute, I guess. Um, yeah, so maybe we might need to jump on it. Do you guys want to do this next time, or do you want to jump on a new call? Yeah, if, if it's not a hard stop for you, it's not a hard stop for me. I okay. have time here. Okay, we can we can do uh, we can do this here. Um, so okay, all right. So okay, so this is NPM. So this thing, the oh. all was about to cut us off when I started talking. Um, okay, are we sharing? And boom, our faces are back on the side. Okay. Um, okay, so this the reason why I'm so skeptical of this is because this JavaScript algorithms is pinned. This is, we're analyzing this repo. And this repo is pinned to this SHA commit that's really old. So if we look at um, this binary, so these are all the binaries. So we did this for caching. We put them all on the same thing. So if any of these change, then we reload the cache because these are expensive to download um, time-wise. So where is this JavaScript algorithm? I call bullshit on this. Um, so let's just download this and take a look. So I was thinking that we keep changing the range on this. I saw the history in the file that we keep changing the range of vulnerabilities on this. Is there a way we can like change so the test itself that we don't have to change it again and again? Maybe just change yeah, it. So you know, it's an integer or something like that. Yeah. The problem with that is if it reports zero, you know, like maybe it's just greater than one. Maybe we should just do greater than one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, the main reason why I think this is a lie is because this file just is all of these dependencies are locked to exact versions with exact SHAs. So unless magically the vulnerabilities disappeared, 2000 vulnerabilities disappeared, then this is a lie. So um, I don't know, but uh, one thing is not great. Yeah, there's no way that that like almost 3,000 vulnerabilities just disappeared. So we'll just make it greater than one, but let's just say I'm thoroughly skeptical of that. Um, okay, so get status, get pull. I'm probably on my manifest branch. All right, okay. Get checkout main. Um, get checkout. Oh my god, you guys are both on Linux, right? Yes. Hashim uh, is on Mac. You're on Mac? No. Are you on it's Mac, like The yeah. polished Linux. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, WSL, I'm complaining about it. This is me complaining about it. Um, it works okay, but it's, uh, it's a little bit annoying. Okay, so... Too many different branches. Okay. Windows users suffer from Stockholm syndrome. I, I <laughs> oh, ouch! 
<laughs> that's that's me, I guess. Oh God, yeah. I had just basically resigned to um, using Windows um, because I'm like, I just, I, I basically, I'm I'm hoping to move here uh, soon, hopefully. Um, but, it, but yeah, my Linux partition. Uh, I just have, I, I just really know how to break computers apparently. So uh, they just, they don't like me. Um, so what are we doing here? Okay, we're going doing this uh, should I thing. Okay, so let's just go and make this, you know, test npm audit, you know, higher than one. <laughs> Lies. Okay, um, and then there's also the, and this is what I was talking about with the test CLI. So, uh, you'll notice that if you do this, uh, did, it, did we get, did I get rid of that? Okay. Well, I guess I got rid of the check. Um, maybe, oh, maybe the dependency got updated. So it's just use JavaScript. Okay. So this is the CLI. So basically you run the CLI and then it will, you know, appropriately determine whether it should use Python or use JavaScript or use Rust analyzers. Okay. So get commit SAM. Uh, should I test uh, npm audit? Um, the the git bisect I did on uh, the scikit test was actually accurate for the first time. The what? The the, the git bisect I ran on to fix scikit. Oh, it worked. It was actually yeah, it was actually accurate. That was the commit where it went bad. Hmm. And 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 it was like I removed the code, but I never knew what it did. Until you really find out what it did. Oh God! Even Sudhanshu didn't know what it did. So. What did? Well, nobody knew what it did. Yeah, but he he wrote it, oh, and God. later on I asked him, "What what does it do?" He said, "It's nothing. I just left it there." But it was actually overloading a test case, which was not. Mm. So so I documented it the thing. And great, great. Now now I have a comment there that do not remove this. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should I test npm audit? This is what happens when you move fast on things. You're not sure, not sure what's going on sometimes. Uh, okay, uh, made uh, vuln count check greater than one. Uh, this let's see the repo. We are analyzing. How do you spell that? Uh, has a lock file. So unless 270 vulnerabilities disappeared. Highly unlikely. Ah, I can't type. This is that. There is a bug somewhere with NPM audit, but not us. All right. Um, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to live dangerously there. We're pushing directly to master. I should have made a branch. Um, okay. Uh, and then model side kit, this is the intermittent failure, right? Mm, yes, it, it is. It has something to do with the metrics. I'll fix it properly. Okay. In a proper way. Should we, let's, let's go just make, let's just make it issue create. This is my favorite thing for creating issues now is just the command line. I create more issues if I do it through the command line because it takes less time. Okay, so this is false is not true. Okay, float inf. Uh, okay, so it's either zero, so the accuracy is zero, basically. It, it, it is actually coming out to be negative uh, mm. with this one. And I have uh, linked an issue in my last PR uh, where this uh, has been explained that you are using either the 
wrong metric to judge the model and that causes this kind so of you issue. have an issue it is not an issue it was uh, you know it was failing in my pr so i just wrote there i haven't made an issue okay yet. so we have right. an issue or we have a pr so we'll link to pr yes and this one i have written it So, model scikit test. Uh, Termit failure of oh, test one. Is this accuracy? Hmm, accuracy. I'll just look into it, which which would work for all of the models reliably. Oh, I forgot to make this call. Okay, great. So we've logged that. Um, we'll talk more in depth next time. Hopefully they'll have more to, to tell us and you guys can talk. I would encourage you both to talk to them some more um, and help them help them write that stuff. Right. Um, because that's going to be a big group effort. So. So should I test. Um, I Python. OK, so this was other. This is. OK, that's the issue. OK, uh, should I test first. Oh my gosh. Come on. Oh, just gonna make this link. Man, this computer is being okay, I probably expect too much here. Um I expect instant response time. <laughs> um okay, so IPython. So the IPython tests, yes, this is this is somewhat my fault, somewhat not my fault. So, um, where is the terminal? So, I was trying yeah. to fix this error, but you know, it is very difficult to have two environments simultaneously set up. Two environments, uh, what do you mean? Like 3.7 and 3.8. Oh, of them yeah. At the same time. It, that it, is, it is messy with the editor. So, yeah. is there a better way to do that? Like, have multiple. Do you have Pi and Vi? Uh, no. Okay, Pi and Vi is your is your new best friend. Um, so this um, this thing is great. Um, basically, it just lets you switch versions of Python, and it makes it pretty pretty easy. Um, nice. And there's an auto installer, which is what I recommend doing. Because uh, when when we try to install pip packages in a separate conda environment, it just slows down yeah. so much. Yeah. And validating uh, changes across Python versions. PyVi is your best friend, or a Docker container, but you know those aren't always the most fun to use. Okay, so, uh, you know, we might want to document. So I was also looking at Windows instruction, installation instructions. Oh, I, 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 since I've been on Windows, now all of a sudden I'm fixing Windows bugs. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, so this one, um, yeah, so we might want to put this in the installation instructions. Um, might want to mention in the install docs. One one more thing around install docs. So when we mm -hmm. go and install, do the service dev install thing while doing our workflow stuff, 
the auto scaler model fails because uh, some of its dependencies are not installed again installed. again yes. Yes, that happens. I, I recently re uh, was trying to re uh, set up uh, another development environment and I uh, encountered that uh, the service dev install uh, thing fails. So if you go into uh, the, the contributing and then set up your workflow environment part, I'll, I'll show you where, where it actually fails. No, not in not not, yeah. not in the normal input yeah. in the development mode. It fails. Yeah. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah. gosh Get into Man. Virtual environment one. Uh, virtual I... environment one. When we run the last command. Yes. And so I have the DFML service dev install one. Uh, it fails with. So the, then the simple solution is you just go and pip install uh, auto scale learn manually and then rerun the command. It goes. Then out. it works. Then it works, but uh, it it is not very clear by the error message because that is yeah, not. Yeah, we the, changed so the error. That, that is not the error. Uh, that it shows that you have to install it separately. So we Man, we had changed the error well. handling in this because, yeah, it wasn't clear, and then I thought we made it clear, and then I think we might have made it unclear again. Okay, man, I've had to update this page with a note about auto SK learn multiple times now. Um, they're problematic, unfortunately. Um, okay. And still, so, some of the tests are failing for auto SK learn because of some some of its dependencies. It has so many dependencies. It does. It has some really problem. annoying dependencies. Um, it's because they aren't using the new um, style project. Uh, it's because they don't have, so basically when you run, and did I document this? I think so. When you run the, um, so let's see. So I added this. Um, just what about this? Are you talking about the last thing we're talking about or are you talking about this now? No, I was I was talking about the last thing. That's what uh, you know uh, got me there. Got me to the mm -hmm. idea of making a video walkthrough because uh, oh, for yeah. someone starting out with the project, it is just uh, you know loop in which he will get stuck. Yeah, setup is always the most difficult. Um, so I would say, um, man, what would be really cool is if what would be really cool. You guys know Gitpod. You guys have seen yes. Gitpod. What would be really cool is yeah. if you had WSL2, so if you had, a, if you could do a containerized development environment locally, right? Like if VS Code, I wonder if VS Code has that. VS Code containerized. Because then all of this would be solved. Because if you have a Linux machine or if you have WSL2, then you can then you we could just provide with a container that has everything already installed right and then you just need to reinstall um, this is not what we want to have container certain container is this what we want so maybe so you mean to say we need to develop inside a container yeah, this looks a little overly complicated. Um, yeah, but, but but if it is a couple of commands, then it is. If it's like I like the Gitpod thing, yeah, because it's like a click and it's done, right? So, um, what about database? Yeah, this would be sweet. Okay, let's just like log this as some of these Elixir people. These people, if you guys haven't seen this Elixir stuff, they don't, they, they're doing some cool stuff. Um, yeah, let's see. It's very Ruby on Rails y. Um, if, you, if you're a Python developer, not, not, doesn't super drive with you, probably, but um, it is very cool. They're doing some great stuff. Um, this is not VS Code. Docker container. This would be really nice. Let's just look into this. Um, so our GH issue create T docs installation local containerized development environment is what we care about. Uh,
Okay. Or... Okay. So that's the thing. Um, okay, so, but this all started because we just knew you wanted to make a video. So that's, that's definitely, making a video is probably, um, you know, a faster path to solving this than creating a solution for localized container development environments. Um, now that I think about it, but, um, you know, that's, so we definitely want to do that either way, but if that exists, we should try to look into that. So if anybody sees anything, so. Uh, the reason why Auto SK Learn is not um, is is having problems is because they don't declare their build dependencies per the new. Uh, well, it's not really new, but it's pep um, pep uh, five seventeen. Yes, they don't declare them in a pep seventeen compliant format. Um, if I remember correctly. And so basically what this is, is it says, um, give me a pyproject.toml um, or pyproject, is it pyproject.toml? I think so. Um, and so, and then there's also five, is this 518? This one is not accepted or no, is it 518? So 517 is draft or no, they're both, oh, they're both final now. Great. Um, so basically they, this, this by Doing this new format, and this is all the setup config stuff that we went through that whole debacle to, to migrate everything. So by doing this new format, it means that you can reliably install things. <laughs> and like it all works basically, you know, because the Python ecosystem has just been a bit of a hell um, for packaging, right? And so say for example, you have a compiled portion of your project like Auto SK Learn does, um, then you can, uh, you know, declare the compiler that you need within the pyproject.toml. Um, and in doing that, uh, you know, your compiler gets installed first, and then when your package gets installed second, it actually has a compiler to run with. Now, if, uh, if the, the Auto SK Learn project last time I saw had not made that switch yet, which means that their compiler and their package get installed at the same time, and therefore their package doesn't see the compiler because it's not installed yet because it's getting installed by pip at the same time. So then you get that compilation error, which means you have to reinstall. I believe that's what's happening. At least that's what, what has been happening before. Um, so if you look at the blank, so basically, you know, you guys know we can create plugins. Uh, I think, Sahel, you'd ask me, like, what if you added a new package, right? So I added one that was just creating a blank package. Right, so this is um, this is just so this is just like what does what this is what a blank package looks like, right? So this is just sort of like a, a skeleton Python project with packaging, right? Um, so if you need to create a Python project, you know this is there's many utilities out there to do it, but here's yet another one, um, and it has you know your basic setup py with this, uh, you, this, there's a current bug that it has a workout around for, and then it has your setup config, right? Um, and um, yeah, this is, you know, so this gets you, you know, um, you know, up and running in a way that would allow you to sidestep those issues. Uh, and over the weekend, I did this, I was working on this, which is one of the things that was blocking Windows support and I think some of the Mac, Windows and Mac stuff official support because um, this library, this is a library that I wrote that um, you know we're then using for uh, testing the built-in HTTP server um, and the APIs around that and the tutorials around that. Uh, mainly, you need you need something like this because you need to start a server on a random port if you're going to run a bunch of tests at the same time, uh, because or else you all end up choosing the same port. Um, so uh, this does that, and it was broken on Windows and Mac, and now it's not. Um, so and this also is an example. If you're making a new project, this is an example of a project that has release automation and has testing across all three platforms, Linux, Mac, Windows, and has this, you know, entry point registration for the console script. So if you want a console 
um, you know, when you install, you get a console program too that you can just run and it has this new style package. So if you need an example, it builds on, I think, why is it? I think the blank project will give you one that does the setup tools version information. So basically you don't need to declare a version if you run this, you know, create me a blank project thing because it's just going to, um, yeah, you don't have to declare a version. It'll just basically grab from your Git repo what the version of your package is. So just know that this is, exists as a reference if you need it. Um, or yeah, just that, to is, that is very nice. I just started. Sweet. And I added to my sea of stars. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, IPython, uh, this is what we're supposed to be talking about. Um, so did you log, can you log an issue about that auto SK learn thing? Like even if it's just like, Hey, you're going to create a tutorial and, and that's like, you know, yes, one of the things that you're going to cover. Great. Thanks. Okay. So as far as IPython is concerned, um, uh, I think that let's see. Okay. Yeah. I think I, 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 uh, didn't we have, was it, was it test notebook? Where was it before? Uh, right now it is in Python 3.8 test. No, I mean, uh, Hashem, how, uh, where was it before this commit? It looks like I moved it. Let's see. Oh, I will find out here. Uh, I'm sorry. I missed it. Oh, just, uh, uh, oh crap. What, what, what happened? Um, I think it was in like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I had moved test notebooks. I think when I moved it, I screwed something up or something. So you initially committed it under test slash test notebooks and then yeah. moved it under docs. And what is the bug? So the bug is coming from the bug is coming. Where is that? How do we find, okay. This bug is because of in ins let me look at the bug and see if it jogs my memory this is a weird bug um at the and i think it's caused by a workaround and that's why it's working in 3.7 but not in 3.8 so maybe they fixed something in 3.8 and now the workaround is no longer required which means that the workaround is blowing up I think that's what's happening here. So yes, but but do you know what it is? That's what I'm. Asking. Yeah, well, that's what. It, yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. Um, so where where can we go to see this bug? Um, I think you linked it in Gitter too, but let's go. Yeah, I looked at this the other day, and I was like, God damn it! This, is, this took me a while to figure out this thing. I don't know if we have enough log output. Just kidding. No, we actually don't. Um, oh, wow, this is a fun way to read this. Okay, so find source. That's what we care about. There we go. Okay, this is this is the thing. So sometimes, okay. So IPython notebook. Okay, so IPython notebook is supposed to. What are we doing this for? Oh, within method. Oh, this is for the config stuff. Okay, so this is for the immutable config stuff. Um, so yeah, this is oof, this is dirty. Um, so the immutable config stuff, because we're using the data classes, um, uh, we went back and forth when we did that on, do we actually change away from using data classes or do we um, use, just continue to use data classes, right? So we went with continue to use data classes, right? Because then you get field, you get all the standard, it's a standard part of the, the Python, right? And to try to stick to standards wherever possible. So, then um, we basically uh, 
the what what the way that we did that was basically saying, hey, you know, uh, we need to let me just look at this within method. So this within method basically gets called so config makes setter. So when you set the properties of a config object or when yeah when you go to create it when you create a config object i think it adds man basically it it adds a bunch of setters and getters uh, it's 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 interesting um so and this stuff i think is how we're going to fix a lot of the config infrastructure too now that we have this set up so basically it goes through all the fields and it says you know here's a uh, you know here's a getter that wraps the field and here's a setter that wraps the field um and then uh so in in the in the setter basically uh, we go and it, this setter will get called since that's on creation of the class so this is when i create the class I'm I'm assigning a property to the class. So then when this class gets instantiated, the setter gets called. Um, when in the like in in the init method of the class that that gets created, um, when you pass in the initial set of arguments, right? So we need to say, are we within the init? And if we're within the init function of the class, then we set the value. Otherwise, we check if we're enforcing immutability. Um, and if we're enforcing immutability, obviously we're going to say, you know, you, you may not do that. Um, uh, and yeah, so that's how the immutable stuff works. Um, and that would also, so this is where I'm thinking we have a potential avenue here to do correct type conversions. Um, because the config, the infrastructure around config in the project is obviously vast, a uh, very important part of the project in configuring all these nested objects, right? Um, and the type conversion that needs to happen is tricky um, because you have these nested objects and it's like, well, what type is it? And then how do I instantiate that type? And then I have to do that all the way down, right? So this is a potential place where we could go in and start doing those type conversions is, is like in, within the setter. Um, so that, that's just, just for reference. Okay. So then getting back to this, basically, um, this within method, um, you know, tells us if we're within a method by inspecting the stack frame. Now I Python has if you look at this issue ipython patches the inspect module uh because they're running i don't know we you know they have these kernels and stuff i don't fully understand the ipython execution model but uh somewhere <laughs> they patch inspect so that if somebody calls and specs uh, yeah <laughs> was this ever fixed um so okay yeah apply monkey patch to inspect find source so if somebody ever oh no okay i don't know um anyways i i went through this whole giant rat hole um okay it looks like they have a commit here uh this is what is Okay, so yeah, so here, if you load this, when when this when this is imported, this ult rat b, uh, then you know you, this is a top level piece of code that happens. So on import, it changes the find source function to be this find source function, right? So something in IPython basically says, hey, if I need to import this thing. Um, uh, is this the same bug? Yeah. Then, um, you know, you, we need to, we need to use our own version of find source. Now, I think by the way of how we're running the tests with testbook, testbook doesn't set up that find source. Um, it, it doesn't end up imp importing this. Whereas, you know, maybe like, uh, Jupyter notebook does, right? So we have to trigger that import. Um, 
and and you know and and do that patch right so it looks like from what i'm seeing in the log here uh it's mad it's mad about it because it says it has no attribute find source so we need to look at this file and we need to see if they got rid of that which probably they did and they probably just did it recently so uh, unless well I haven't really been paying a lot of attention to the okay Wow, nice commit messages. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, we got to clone this thing. Well, we don't really need to clone this thing. We don't need to figure it out. All right. We, we could, but, um, you know, I won't make you guys, if it, you guys may not be interested to go find out the entire history of inspect find source. Um, so, <laughs> so we will just call this good and fix the bug. Um, all right. So the issue is showing up on 3.8, you said? Yes. Okay. So they released a new version where, okay. So the thing is, we're going to run this and it may... It may, they may have moved, no, they may have moved it, is the thing. So we're going to need to go look at that, because it's going to blow up. I mean, it will blow up, unless you patch it. So we do have to go figure out what the hell they did with it. Um, so, so are we going to pin our dependency to some older commit, or we are going to patch uh, it? No, we're going to make a, we're going to, um, we're going to, um, uh, that depth may not be sufficient. We're not gonna we're not gonna pin the dependency. Uh, we tried doing the dependency pinning thing, and I think basically um, that is I don't think you know, like a disaster again. waiting. Yeah, happen. exactly. It's a disaster, and and we spent a bunch of we put a bunch of time into that, and then created a massive disaster, and then found out that that should never be done. Um, so. <laughs> so instead, you know, we're gonna add a programmatic workaround saying if 3.8. Uh, then you know we know that we need to do this. If 3.7, we know that we need to do this. So, so let's see. I Python, I get log dash p, and then where is this? Okay. Find source removed in this commit initial integration of stack data in 25, 2019. So they haven't done a release in a long time, and all of a sudden they did a release, and this thing moved. This function is a monkey patch. I found some monkey patch not applied. Okay. Let's check out the commit. So did it move somewhere else? Is the question. Deprecated since took her from much pain. All right, I guess it just disappears. So we'll try to rerun this and see what happens. Um, so maybe it's no longer required. I find that you know I find that hard to believe, but we'll find out what happens. So um, what test was this that fails? So this is. Um, test notebook, 10 MB Turing models. Okay, and we need Python 3.8 to do this. And I'm sure I'm on 3.7. What do we have here? Do we have a 3. I think I have a version of 3.8 laying around. Where is it? Um, local. Where did I put you? Local. Okay, so I think it's in... Documents. Our models cache. Next. 
No. Well, there goes my version of Python 3.8. So um, let's just kick it to the CI Can't then. Can't you just do a, do a locate? Do, no. Uh, locate. You, uh, Update DB locate. Uh, well, this is, let's see, what? how does that work? I, I'm kind of doubting that this can work because this is a WSL1 system. And I believe that uses a background daemon that indexes things, but we can try it. In my mind, I might be thinking of a different thing. Um, so, so it works pretty well on a native machine. Yeah, let's see. What is, so Python 3.8. Does it search the whole system or? You have to update the database once. How do I do that? Uh, update DB. Yeah, it has some issue with that. Yeah, I think I think usually you have a daemon that runs and does this stuff. If you're on a real Linux system. Okay, you know. Uh, okay, so it's going to create a SQL database. Okay, um, I don't think I don't think it's here though. Is the thing I think I think I was in the middle of doing some development that that killed it. Um, so we will just try to remove this on 3.8 and see what happens. Um, uh, and we'll push it to the CI. Maybe on a different branch. Yeah, definitely on a different branch. <laughs> this one I'm not pushing to master. <laughs> that one was, uh, the, the, the last one was an exception there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is just something, you know, happens. If you have the yeah. push rights, you just go ahead and push them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that can happen. Then I end up going in, changing the settings, reverting um, uh, branch protection, and rolling back my commit real quick and pushing again before anybody anybody ends up pulling it. Okay, if in Python and not in Python, so let's just say, um, sys.version info dot major three. Oh, my dog is dreaming. He's barking. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so funny. Okay, so minor is 3.7 or less. Then we do this. Can you guys hear him? Yeah. He's asleep yeah, right it now. Is, um, it is not very, very clear, but yeah, it is. Okay. All right, so this looks good, right? Basically, if it's three version 3.7 or less, then we're going to do this. Otherwise, we don't. And then we just check out a new branch and try it. Okay. Uh, so I Python find source. Deprecated in three, eight, and beyond. Do not monkey patch. All right, let's see how it goes. Um, and then I think we'll call it for the day, right? All right, 
anything else for today? We'll talk more about governance next time and all that stuff and, and trying to figure out because we have no idea what any of that means. Um, and hopefully we'll have you know a decision on um, the logo as well. Um, but yeah, we'll try to figure out, you know, I, I would encourage you guys to meet both of you, um, with Yash and Saksham and understand what they're doing there and get involved. Um, cause you know, seems like, you know, we'll, we'll, there's a, there's a solid chance that we'll, you know, move that over there and then we can have permissions to make everybody maintainers. Right. And, and I assume you guys, you guys are still here. So I assume you have interest in you're maintaining things. So surprise, you're a maintainer. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I would, I would sync up with them. Um, you know, uh, we could all sync or you could, you probably good to sync one-on-one -on -one as well. Um, all right, great. Uh, anything else for the day or we'll call it? Yeah, Sweet. let's call it. Sweet. Thanks guys. We'll, uh, we'll keep this shorter next time. So, um, we, we had to figure out, you know, a bunch of video stuff and all that. So, all right, have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.